today my talk, um, I think, is um, going to show you that really it's sort of dovetailing into everything that you've heard yesterday and very much um, with the, the presentation Rob's just given too, I think uh, there's very much a similar trend and um, we're very aware of sort of what's around us and the global trends that are happening. So I'm going to talk to you today about the UK market and the current trends that we're seeing there relevant to, to First Light and those emerging trends. So the UK market has been a key market for us for 10 years now. It makes up 30% of our venison sales and offers us a non-seasonal added value premium market. With Brexit uncertainty, UK retail have had to cut back, re reinvent and reinvigorate themselves to stay ahead of the game. So today I would like to share with you some of those trends that we are seeing and understand them a bit better. Because this market is so important to us, we really needed to understand how is venison facing, um, faring in this space. So earlier this year, we conducted some consumer research to, to find out we, where we, how, we, how we were placed. It was great news for venison. Even though the venison category is a relatively small one, it represents 13 million pounds in the UK market, 4.2% of Great British households and 1.16 million shoppers. Despite the fact that we know red meat consumption is declining and despite Dan's, Dan's mentioned yesterday that UK sales have declined, for first light, this is a market that has been bucking our trend, the trend for us with our retail partners. And year on year, we are seeing significant growth in that market. When we look at the price perspective, aside from fish, venison is right up there and all other proteins are more expensive. So why? Why are we seeing these trends? What is driving them? In our changing world and at the premium end of the scale where venison is placed, it is not price but emotive trends that are shaping our food purchase decisions. And we have seen that yesterday in all of the talks given by all of the speakers, the emotive trends that are, that are coming up. In Hamish's speak yesterday, he talked about three trends, authenticity, convenience and trust coming up as consumer preferences. So the trends that we're seeing in this UK market relevant to venison are not just a UK phenomena, they are worldwide trends we are seeing everywhere, even back here at home. In all of the consumers researched, 73% placed health and well-being as a key factor in food purchase choices. And this trend is growing year on year because consumers are prepared to spend more on health. So again, it's not the price that they're focused on, it is the health consideration and the effect that it has on them which is influencing their purchasing decision. Likewise, that special occasion, whether it be a romantic event, a celebration, a birthday or just some other special event, people are happy to go out and pay more because they know I'm going to make that purchase because it suits this event. Shoppers are keen to try something new and we hear from Rob and these millennials, they're not going to do what we did or mum and dad did, they're out to try something new. Every year we see top new food trends, whether it's a new spice, a new flavour, we see these trends emerging. For some people, it's trying something new, like venison. So this is great news for venison. It's positive and it helps to explain why we're seeing this growth and also the opportunities that it presents. So what about the emerging trends? Where do we see the next opportunity for venison? When it comes to retail, we know UK are leaders in this space. Alongside health, the environment, carbon footprint, is becoming an increasingly important part of the consumer's purchase choice. And I think that's been drummed home well and truly to us all in the last couple of days. 
The focus of this conference is reflection and direction. And the two key points for me that I got number one for out of Dan's speech yesterday was respected, doing the right thing for the environment, animals and people. Recognised by consumers and the communities for doing the right thing. We know in the UK market, similar to us, they had their own environmental issues around water quality, soil pollution and carbon footprint. And so we are now all focused on tidying up our own backyard and presenting something of real value to our customer. But how do we communicate that to the customer? How do we let them know, at a glance, how our venison sits compared to the other protein choices that they are presented with, especially on the environmental sustainability front? A couple of years ago, we built a home, and I want to share this with you because I think these are important aspects. As a consumer, I know what they're thinking because I am one. When we built three years ago, we made the decision, like probably a few of you here, to install solar panels on our house. Now, this wasn't so much of a commercial decision, and I'm actually still scratching my head to work out what the return on the investment is, because I don't actually think I can ever really work that out. But when we made that choice and decision, it was just as much of a good feel factor and, and the, um, the feeling that I was actually doing something good for the environment. We live in Hawke's Bay, a high sunshine hour. How can I give back to that community? Or how can I you know, give back and you know, reduce my carbon footprint? Every month I get a report from our energy provider to tell me how, many, how much carbon I have offset in tree equivalents and it gives me the warm fuzzies. It really does. Likewise, we can look at the energy rating, which is, is a pretty familiar energy rating that we see on all of our electrical, electrical appliances now. Our washing machine broke. So yes, while, while price is always a consideration in these factors, it wasn't the sole decision in, in, um, in the process of the machine that we purchased. Very much we were looking at the energy rating. How much water does this use? Is it efficient on electricity? Again, it goes back to the, key, the emotional connection and the good feel factors that is actually influencing our purchasing choices. In the environmental space, this is becoming more and more important and a way of validating products and services to our consumer. So what does this mean for venison? It's only an idea and a concept at this stage. But with our consumers focused on global warming and our carbon footprint under scrutiny, we believe the next step for venison is to develop a simple holistic system that is easy to understand, like a traffic light system. This system, at a glance, would inform the consumer what the footprint of our venison was compared to other venison choices, or protein choices, sorry. This would provide the opportunity for the consumer to make a conscious purchase of choice. It would be displayed on the retail pack and would be easily visible to the consumer. Again, it is only a concept at this stage and there is a lot of work that needs to be done to get to this point. I mean, Rob is alluding to some of the work that needs to be done. You know, you've heard from Mark, you've heard Lane's talk, you've heard the talks yesterday from Hamish. You know, there's a lot of work that we need to do in this area to actually work out how we can promote and, and show something like this on our pack for venison that validates it and says to the consumer, hey, great, I'm going to eat this high value protein and venison's right up there at the top of the game, that's the choice I'm going to make. And that's when price starts to become unimportant. It's a motive, it's a good feel factor, it's good for the environment. So in summary, for us, UK is a key non-seasonal added value premium market. Despite red meat consumption decline, venison is leading the space. This is due to the current trends we are seeing, which are not price driven, but are driven by emotive trends such as health and well-being, special events, convenience, or something new. Or the newer millennials that just don't want to don't want to do what we've done previously. We believe environment and carbon footprint is the next way to communicate this with a traffic light system or a holistic symbol 
all of the work, and I know there was a question earlier about how do we connect this and, and convey this message to the consumer. We've got to do this in a simplistic, easy way. And for food, I don't believe there's many of these marks around. The only one that comes to mind off the top of my head is the health mark tick that we see on products. There's a lot of work to be done in the space and to get there. But First Light would like to lead in this space. 